All the excitement was coming from Allegheny County Airport, where the fourth annual aviation fair was in progress. The big show, sponsored by the Aviation Explorers East Valley Area Council of the Boy Scouts, gave Pittsburghers a chance to see some aircraft from the inside. From helicopters to ultralights, from the giant Air Force C-141, which made a dramatic entrance yesterday, to U.S. Air's sleek DC-9, and a whole lot in between. But the star of the show was undoubtedly the Boeing B-29, four-engine bomber from World War II that now belongs to the Confederate Air Force. This particular plane is the last flying B-29 in the world. It's been used in several major movies. Action News was invited to go along on a fly over downtown Pittsburgh, including a low-level pass down the runway at Greater Pitt, which must have left some modern air travelers thinking they were in a time warp. Flying the big ship around the country is obviously a labor of love for the men of the CAF. Uh, it can be very emotional for a lot of people. A lot of people uh, spend a lot of time in these airplanes and uh, have had a lot of uh, real experiences in them, and it's a very emotional thing. A fellow comes back and uh, hasn't seen one for 30 years, and it's uh, quite, a, quite an experience for him, and it's quite an experience for us, too. And it's the only one in the world that's still flying, and uh, we, I consider it a personal honor and a privilege to fly in this airplane. It's a great feeling for us because the people uh, where we go are so appreciative of having the airplane. There are some people who've never seen one. There are some people who worked on them and haven't seen them for years. And then there are other people that have flown in them and hadn't seen them. And it's quite a thrill for us to do this. The Pennsylvania Air National Guard recently returned from a long-range mission to Panama, just one of the many modern duties that the Guard is asked to perform. We went along to get a better idea of the role of the Guard in national defense. Out of uniform and in their civilian jobs, the men and women of the Air National Guard blend into the general population. But their other life involves maintaining and flying sophisticated airplanes as part of the country's air defense system. The guard base at Greater Pittsburgh Airport hums with quiet excitement as the 171st Air Refueling Wing and the 112th Tactical Fighter Group hold a midnight briefing. Radio frequencies, formation, procedures and routes are outlined to the pilots who will take off at 2 a.m. for the 2,000-mile flight to Howard Air Force Base in Panama. Two giant KC-135s will carry 8,000 pounds of equipment and 27,000 extra pounds of fuel, not just for themselves. The single-seat A-7 fighter bombers en route for a month of active duty will take on that fuel during the flight in tricky air-to-air -air refueling. The route is a familiar one to the Air National Guard, out of Pittsburgh, down over the southern United States, across the Gulf of Mexico, skirting the western edge of Cuba, then straight to the Panama Canal. Then we go around on the other side here. Lieutenant Colonel John yeah, Falsgraf pre-flights his $3 million A-7, checking every detail. This is his other life. Well, I work downtown at Mellon Bank at the uh, principal office in the uh, systems uh, field. I'm a project manager down there. We develop automated systems. One by one, the jet engines scream into life. The eight airplane formation takes off into Pittsburgh's night sky. Two of the A-7s are spares. They'll turn back over Tennessee. As the hours drone by, two times the refueling boom is lowered into place. The A-7s slide in underneath and line up for their gas station in the sky. At 500 miles an hour, 25,000 feet up in the air, they gulp three tons of fuel a minute. No rest stops, no delay. In the heat and humidity at Howard, the regular Air Force Southern Division is on permanent location. It is part of an overall command that involves not only the defense of the canal, but advice and assistance for Latin American nations that request it, plus search and rescue and disaster relief. The planes of the 112th will be here through August with 55 support personnel, one of 14 rotating Air Guard units from around the country, each providing several weeks of active duty in a year-round commitment. It is an arrangement that the government believes provides greater flexibility at reduced cost. Well, while we're here, we're just like we're on active duty. Uh, we work day to day with the actives, uh, fly with them and everything else, which is all part of our training. We work with the uh, forward air controllers on the, what we call a close air support mission where they point out the target and then we'll drop practice bombs on them. 
believe it or not, we have a doctor, a medical doctor. We have a lawyer. We have a guy that uh, cuts stone for cemeteries, owns his own business. I think it's the best bet for the dollar that we're spending in military money. There is, of course, a legitimate division of political thought concerning U.S. policy in Central America. But even the most severe critics of the administration would hardly deny the need for an adequate defense of this vital waterway. The Panama Canal is awesome. 14,000 ships a year from many nations use this 50-mile shortcut between North and South America. It costs $400 million and an incredible 6,000 lives to build. Under the treaty signed by the Carter administration, Panama will have the right after the year 2000 to assume total control. It is assumed, however, that it will request a continued military presence and canal defense commitment. It is not only a necessity for commercial ship traffic, but the canal is the key for Atlantic to Pacific movement for the U.S. Navy. There was a time when the Air National Guard units around the country flew airplanes that the Air Force didn't really want anymore, and its mission was not clearly defined. That's not the case anymore. Its role now is to fit in with and become almost a part of the regular active duty Air Force and to provide a cadre of experienced personnel and modern airplanes available on a full-time basis if necessary in a national emergency. Adam Lynch, Channel 4 Action News. Weekend in a row, Pittsburgh area skies were filled with high-performance airplanes. After an absence of more than 10 years, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds were back in Westmoreland County. This is the kind of show the fans came to see. The Thunderbirds are always a big draw wherever they go, and today was no exception. This kind of close formation flying has been a hit around the country and around the world. 30,000 plus came to La Trobe Airport today. Greater numbers than last weekend, which was a big weekend air show, but did not have the drawing power of the Thunderbirds. Yesterday morning, I got a rare chance to fly in one of their F-16s. The Air Force calls them media rides. A chance for frustrated jet jockeys to fantasize about what this kind of life must be like. To say the least, it is a thrill that is difficult to describe, like being in Top Gun as opposed to just watching the movie. After a two-hour delay today because of low clouds, the sun finally came out for a while and the final air show of the season around here was a great success. Mm. Fun. It was, I had to get up at what time in the morning to watch you? <laughs> I was glad you came up. I was happy to do it. Thank you. Well, it was.